Welcome, mateys! Welcome aboard once again to the finest ship to ever sail the Silicon Seas. Welcome, one and all, to the Gaming Galleon. I'm Captain Raz, and for the next 60 or so minutes, we are gonna be heroes. We are gonna be part of one of the coolest military forces to ever grace the planet Earth. What are we doing today, you may ask? Well, we are saving the world, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing short of saving the world in one of the grandest fashions possible. We will be joining the Earth Defense Force in Earth Defense Force 2017 for the Xbox 360. That's right, I did not stutter, ladies and gentlemen. I said the Xbox 360. This is the first time that we've not only played an Xbox 360 game, but it's the first time we have played an Xbox game at all. Isn't that fascinating? All the voyages we've been to and we've never once played an Xbox game. Well, I don't want to think I don't want to say that I'm biased toward PlayStation or Nintendo, uh, but I have to admit they tend to get um, my time and my money much more than Xbox ever has. Um, I did not get an original Xbox until they were, you know, out for at least 10 years or so. Uh, I waited until they got to the point where they were sitting around, you know, Goodwills and, and pawn shops um, for cheap. And once I finally got one, I started to really appreciate the library. And the Xbox 360, I waited even longer. In fact, if were it not for the generosity of... Uh, my brother-in-law and dear sweet sister during the Christmas season I still would not have one and I would not have been able to play a game that I'd been looking forward to playing for years years I have heard about Earth Defense Force 2017 I heard about uh, and I've seen it you know it's the YouTube era if you want to look up a game you'll find it um, you can find it but it wasn't like I was looking for Earth Defense Force when I found it. Uh, this is a game that, that among retro gamers is really sought after, really a, a cult following. That's not to say it's rare or anything like that, but it's one of these games that if you looked at it on the shelf at a store, you would never think twice about it. It's not until, you know, you get to hear about it from maybe some of the reviewers you respect that you realize, wow, there's something really special here. And that's basically what we have here. It's Earth Defense Force 2017, and what is that? It's basically you and a group of other fellow Marines go out into the city and you destroy giant insects that are being dropped by alien invaders. And that's it. And along the way, uh, as you destroy the insects, they will leave loot like armor and weapons and if you manage to clear the stage and survive you bring all that back to headquarters and if it's a better weapon or uh then then you can keep it for your next mission uh we'll get more into that well i, I see that's the thing that's why i have to describe it now because it gets so chaotic in the game of earth defense force that there's not a lot of time to just take a breath Okay, there's guys screaming, there's explosions happening, uh, there's alien cries, uh, you know, like insect cries, explosions, uh, once again, explosions, and frankly, you may have a hard time hearing me when we're in the thick of it, okay? You're just going to have to take your gun, take your flamethrower, aim, and shoot, okay? Okay? Don't wait for direction, don't wait for instruction. Just wait until they're all dead, dead, dead. And I gotta tell you, there's something very cathartic about Earth Defense Force for someone like myself who lives in probably the soggiest part of the Midwest, Indiana. I have a house that, that may as well be on a bog. And last summer, we had a... a Last winter, we had a pretty temperate winter and, and a very uh, mild summer. So as a result, 
insects started invading my living space. I had done all this uh, work on the garage to make it a nice area where I could, you know, play some video games on a couch in the outdoors, in the safety and comfort and shade of the garage. And spiders started invading the garage. They were everywhere. They started multiplying, uh, put, putting cobwebs all over the N64s. I mean, it was terrible. I, I had Terminex come out, and they would spray, and it still wouldn't be enough. Th they're a menace. I think finally, about the third time Terminex was able to get the, get the spiders out of the garage, and that's when the ants showed up in the house. Apparently, the spiders had been keeping the ants at bay, and now that they're gone, now ants are coming into the house! They were, they were lining up to get into the bedroom just to get a, a can of pop. They started, you know, I found them in the garbage can. It was like, oh, it was horrible. It was like a horror story. Like, like an Alfred Hitch, Hitchcock movie. Alfred Hitchcock movie. Um, I mean, it's not, it's so violating. You know, I don't know if, when's the last time you've dealt with an infestation, but it just feels so violating. You just feel like, you have no place left to go. It's like being robbed and you have to live in the scene of the crime. You know what I'm saying? You, you just don't feel like you're home anymore. And that's what happens when you, you get infested. So that's what's so great about Earth Defense Force. Is finally you can eliminate each and every one of these disgusting vermin. I don't think ants are vermin, are they? What are ants? Insects. I don't know what to tell you. Um... And, and you're saving the day. So, God bless this game. Uh, we have... Uh, yeah, it's a decent chest. Lots going on in here. I, I mean, it's not, you know... I don't think you're going to drop your pants over it, but... Um, a lot of stories, so that's good. And uh, um, I think we'll have a mailbag coming in. Uh, we are actually live-linked for the first time to the world. Usually, we just send this out. And uh, we have our letters brought in via carrier pigeon, via hot air balloon, and dropped onto the deck of the ship. But today I've actually got a live link right over here on the side. So we may be able to uh, grab a question from over here toward the end of the show from one of you out there. So feel free to leave something, and I'll just grab it when, when it happens. Um, but it, but let's, um, let's go on from there. Let's get ready. I mean, put on your helmet. Make sure your your uh, make sure your AK forty seven's got enough bullets, and make sure you're ready to laugh because you know, in a time when video games just take themselves way too seriously, it's so refreshing to see a game like Earth Defense Force come out, find a following, and be able to flourish in this industry even today. Yes, they're still making Earth Defense Forces, even in today's market. So let's get started. It's Earth Defense Force 2017 for the Xbox 360. Let's save the day, folks. Alright, here we go. Oh, where are my headphones? Alright, hold on. We're good. Okay. All right, here we go. Earth Defense Force. Uh, I uh, decided to go with an AK-47 and a rocket launcher. Keep it simple, stupid. And you see all that red all over the all over the radar? Uh, that's the target. Now, I may have bit off more than I can chew here because I think I'm playing on hard. I, I oh no, no, I think we're just playing on normal. So this shouldn't be too bad. Um, the, the cool thing about Earth Defense Force is, is there's a lot of missions. There's somewhere, I believe somewhere around 70 missions that you can play. And this is all, you know, this is really all there is to it. You're in a fully destructible environment with ridiculously large enemies out to take, you know, destroy you and your buddies. And I pray that you guys can hear me okay because... As you can see, there's a lot going on. Uh, you can't shoot your buddies. There's friendly fire. So make sure not to, not to blow their heads off. 
Uh, but I'm going to be talking loud because I know that this game gets loud. And while my headphones aren't blown out, you guys may be, and I apologize for that. I actually tried to sweeten the audio for a good 20 minutes on this button. This pal. This pal? This game. And it was like just not happening. I, I, I couldn't get it right. So I'm just going to have to yell. You're going to have to turn it down a little bit. And hopefully we'll find a happy medium. But, you know, a game like this, when you're playing on your own, the last thing you want to do is turn it down. Because it's just, it's so ridiculous. All the craziness that's happening. I mean, I don't even have to think. I'm here, I'm sitting here talking to you guys. I don't have to concentrate. I just have to aim and shoot at the red. And as you can see, everything's, <laughs> everything's destructible. It's so awesome. And you see, we do have some power-ups here. And you'll take a look at how the power-ups are made. I mean, you know, N64 wants their technology back here. This is health. Uh, there, there's also armor. And that's the fun, that's the best thing about this game is you can replay the levels and you can replay them at five different difficulty levels. And the reason you would play through them is for what we're seeing right here weapons okay some sort of unidentifiable edf gear has just been dropped by the ant and we have to finish off the mission to be able to take it back to headquarters and get it appraised and then the third power up is armor now you see i have 731 hit points here as long as I pick up any armor that I pick up, I don't really know how the ra what the ratio is. I think it's like every 10 armor you get one hit point or something like that. Don't quote me, but um, every time you pick up some armor, you that adds to your total your total hit points going in later on. So the more you play, the better you get, and so it's really got that sense of RPG pro progression to it. Um, but the game's not screwing around in the later di where is Where are these people? Do I have to blow up this building to find them? <laughs> Coming down! Whoa, whoa! Alright, that's easier. That, I mean, you know, collateral damage is going to happen during an alien infestation. I don't know what to tell you. You know, build a, build a, whoa, <laughs> where'd you come from? Oh, no, there's more! I love how they just appeared. You know, you got you really got to bring your uh, your sense of disbelief. Uh, is that what that's called? I don't know what it's called. You really got to uh, your d dispel? No, disable. Uh, what am I trying to say? Suspend, suspend your disbelief. That's it. You really got to su su suspend your disbelief in uh, in Earth Defense Force. You know, we're here for the fun. Uh, this was a this was a company that said, look. There's plenty of realistic games out there, like Years of War and Halo, that's that's making a shooter that's just two nines, right in the physics, right in you know the motivation of where everything should be. We don't want that, okay? There's enough of that. What we want is lots and lots of carnage. We want you know a hundred yards of ant blood everywhere, okay? That's what we want people to deal with. And that's what we're seeing right here. And I feel a little remorseful that I'm playing this on normal. I feel like I should have manned up. In fact, I meant to and I forgot to, but whatever. Uh, I, I wanted to play this particular mission on hard. But we'll get crazy um, after the booty segment and we'll, we'll jack up the difficulty to hard. And if I get creamed, I'll get creamed. That's just how it's gonna be. Um, but, you know, the, the, the reason you want to jack up the difficulty is the better the difficulty, the more of a chance you're going to find a better weapon. And a lot of people who play this, they encourage that uh, to play the first, you know, when you, when you get the game, play the first four or five levels on, uh-oh, we got incoming. You see, because it's just not insects. It's just not insects we're dealing with. We're dealing with the stupid alien invaders who dared, dared to take on Tokyo, Japan. 
and the rest of the world. But we're not going to have it. So look at them. They're dropping these stupid ants. They've cloned them, mutated them, and they're dropping them onto Tokyo. What is up with that? So now what we have to do... And God, I hope we do it quick, because where are we at here? We're about 25 minutes into the voyage. Is that right? God, it might even be... No. What, 15, 16 minutes? All right, we got about 10 minutes. Okay, we got to kill these... We got to kill the, the ships. We have to wait for their drop to open up. Oh, I got him. All right, so that's one. But now I'm surrounded by ants. And the ship's coming down. Oh, <laughs> oh it's gone. All right, great. How convenient. There's the other one. You got to take down that other ship and clear up the rest of the ants. And I think this this uh, district of Tokyo will be safe for now. Leave me alone, ant. I'm trying to kill your mothership. And now the other marines are helping me out. And they're constantly chattering. I... My headphones are like really low today. I don't know why, so I can't really hear them. I can hear the the occasional Rah! of like the ants screaming when I kill them. So hopefully I'm not meshing with the the soldiers too much. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. I got a nice shot here. Open up, Buttercup. Yeah, that's it. Coming down. See you later, alligator. Look at this. Look at how big it is. When's the last time you saw that coming down your head? Something that big coming down your head. Alright, let's clean them up and go home, boys. We got a chest to look through. Now look at all the look at all the armor here. But again, none of it matters unless you finish the mission. And that's why it's like, you know, it's kinda like gambling. If you, you, you bet too too much, you may end up losing it all. Some shocking news has just come in. The EDF 7th Division, stationed in Peking, has been annihilated. The Far East Division was apparently demolished by an army of robots. It appears the Ravagers have unleashed an army of terrifying fighter robots to put an end to the valiant efforts of the EDF. So yeah, you got you got robots, you got spiders, you got ants. This is not a game that you're going to be able to see all of in one voyage. Trust me. And look, now, so now we can get to see all of what we got here. Uh, we got a lot of armor. That's good, so we'll get some hit points out of it. Uh, it would tell us if we found a new weapon. Uh, you know, all these weapons here, the bound gun, the air tortoise, the emerald missile. Uh, we have it, but take a look. You've got missile launchers. You've got special weapons. Who knows what it does? You got grenades. There are ten thousand different ways to kill bad guys in Earth Defense Force, and I'm just gonna set us up for our next one. I'm gonna do hard. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna select our equipment. I want to go into the next one with a flamethrower because how can you say no? And I think we'll probably stick with... We're going to get crazy. We'll get crazy. Uh, the biggest rocket launcher I have. And then we will be ready to go later. And we're going to go on hard. Okay? But we'll do that later. We'll come back right now. started at 20. We're a little light, frankly. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry, we're going. We're going, we're out of here. We're out of here. We're back. Kill the audio. Save the game. Pause the game. Okay, good. So we've got that out of the way, so we'll be able to go right into uh, our next adventure, taking out an ant, uh, an ant nest. Okay? Uh, but that's it. I mean, that's all you do. You run around, you kill, 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 and 
you know, you pick up new weapons along the way. And you never know. Now, I'm picking, you've seen me pick up some pretty conventional stuff here. We're dealing with rocket launchers. We're dealing with machine guns. You know, I pull in a flamethrower next round. That'll be a lot of fun. But they're, they just break the goofy meter later on in this game with the kind of stuff that you can pick up and use as a weapon. So it's interesting every time. And while this one that we're playing is the first one to ever come to America and is one player and pretty basic, this series has continued to move on and today is online with multiple classes beyond just the Marine I'm playing today. So uh, there are 10 million different ways and styles to kill those giant insects. And uh, the fact that you can do it with a friend makes it even better. Okay, so let's get into this baby. I feel like we're hella light, but um, that's okay. Doesn't always have to be a long voyage, right? Okay, let's uh, let's get in here. So we're still in this period where um, we're kind of scrounging and scraping, but I, I think we did okay here. We just sometimes you got to do a little more work. You can't just walk into one place every week, and you know they just drop a, a you know a a crate load of, of games on you. We scrimped. And we, uh, we, we scrounged in the dirt, and we found some good deals. So let's take a look. And there is kind of an ongoing theme here. We're going to find uh, a couple odds and ends, but for the most part, shockingly, most of this, for multiple places, are PlayStation 1 games. Let me get this guy up. All right, there we go. And um, we'll start with this one. Uh, again, these are this was very mix and match. This was simply walking into a Salvation Army and they had this behind the glass, of course. I mean, Salvation Army, let me tell you something about Salvation Army. I, at the risk of attacking a charitable uh, business, I don't think they're that charitable. I feel like they're really jacking their prices up for stuff that they're, they're just getting donated. And, and almost to the point where they're not even going to sell it. Like, they're trying to sell, like, forgettable Wii games for, like, nine bucks each. Like, I don't know who's pricing this stuff, but that's never going to happen. But, you know, sometimes they're falling through the cracks, and I would say that's what happened with, with Pac-Man World here. This is a pretty decent um, 3D platformer. There's about three of these. This was the only one on the PlayStation 1. And it's it's just, you know... 3D platformer starring Pac-Man. I'm pretty sure he can talk. I've never played this one. I played uh, a little bit of Pac-World Pac 3. And the coolest thing... I, I don't know if it's the coolest thing, but if anything, it's cool in that in addition to this 3D platformer world game, you, of course, get uh, the original Pac-Man. Let, uh, let me hit the autofocus here. Get this going here real quick. Trying my best not to turn it on until we're looking at games here. Because I've had some people be like, dude, you're, you're, you're killing me with the autofocus. You're going back and forth. You're, so we're, we're going to try and manage that better. Um, but there you go. I don't think I'm going to get that. I mean, we all know what Pac-Man looks like, right? Why do I even bother? All right, so this came out to... Um, I think they did two on this. No more than two. I don't think it was one. You know, Salvation Army Shady. They'll put they'll put games and stuff in with a bunch of DVDs, and the sign will say, you know, dollar or, or uh, you know, for everything on the rack here. You bringing this up, and they'll look at it, and then that's when it's time for them to appraise. You know what? This isn't a mom and pop pawn shop. Okay, you're. This is not your flea marketplace. Like. Flat rates, especially if there's a sign saying dollar stuff, you know, don't 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 throw three bucks at me, out of nowhere. I'm just saying. Okay, so Pac World, pretty happy to have this, especially because we had two and three. I think um, we have all the Pac Worlds now, so that's cool. All right, uh, this one sucks, and the reason it sucked was I bought this retail, and this isn't an expensive game by any means, but it's quite a curiosity, so I thought I'd bring it up. Especially since we really do have a lot of PlayStation 1 games we're going to be going through here today. If I can get the... Man, getting the instruction manuals out of these things. What a pain. Like... 
Isn't this fascinating entertainment here? Okay, here we go. So I had to take it out because there's a sticker on the front. I want you to get a good look at this. Um, but I paid four bucks for this, which you know isn't you know it's only four bucks, and it's a game I've been looking for for a while. It's the cheapest I've ever found it. But of course, then like four days later, I found it for a dollar. So that sucked. But anyway, um, I wanted to point this out because you know, I, if you know me, you know I love Twisted Metal, and I'd like to get every one of them. And this is one of the the final ones that I never got a hold of. And it's Twisted Metal Small Brawl. Isn't that weird? And if you can't figure out what that is, it's basically a Twisted Metal game, but all of the combatants are children, and they're fighting with RC cars. Isn't that weird? I don't know what market they were they were going for here. You know, this was the time where that where Sony had really kicked out the uh, the original creators of this game. I believe they were single track. I believe that's the company that created Twisted Metal. And so they were like, oh man, Twisted Metal teams, let's just, let's market it to everyone. Twisted Metal Small Brawl. I mean, this was like during the, the darkest periods of the Twisted Metal era. Um, definitely uh, one of the valleys in uh, this, this series' existence. Okay, so there you go. Twisted Metal Small Brawl. Let's get back to the deals. Um, at Half Price Books, I found a couple of PlayStation 1 games for a buck each. Uh, if I don't have them and they're in cases, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, this one is kind of in a case. This is Mist. This is, uh, from what I understand, a pretty fantastic adventure game. Uh, my adventure game experience comes more from the NES days than uh, PC. But this was one of the earlier titles, I think. Let's see how early. Oh, no, they're all black, aren't they? You gotta love how PlayStation 1 games are black, isn't that neat? I just thought that was really styling. Uh, but this thing's been kind of piecemealed together. The disc looks kind of rough, but I think it'll be alright. It's published by Sunsoft. That's kind of weird. Uh, but you you really only have some sort of box art here. This is not the manual. And it uh, looks like there's some sort of rental directions on the back, but um, I hear Mist is pretty cool. I don't think we have it in the hold, and it was a buck, so I went for it. And then also there, I think we have this, because who doesn't? But I don't know if I have it for PlayStation 1. In any event, uh, it's a compilation of pretty great games for a buck. Pac-Man Namco Museum 1. Uh, the other fascinating thing about this series was for the PlayStation 1, this is really when they first started doing compilations for console. They finally, you know, CD technology, they could put a lot of stuff on uh, that they, they couldn't do with cartridges for the most part. But this one was really cool because they had this, they really took the, muse, the Nanko Museum name literally in that in addition to the video games that are in here, there's seven games, you know, like Pac-Man, Galaga, stuff like that. They made a three-dimensional first-person museum of sorts that you can walk through to find the games and along the way find exhibits about those games. It's really fascinating. And they made five of these. Now, this one, obviously, is pretty popular. It's got Pac-Man on it. It says it's greatest hits. These are a dime a dozen. These are very easy to find, uh, as is Volume 3. But the other five, you also notice there's an N there. Namco Museum, Volume 1, and then Pac-Man's kind of standing right in front of, kind of behind a, a big N. Uh, so this is the N volume. There's Volume 2, 3, 4, and 5 have, you know, an A respectively, an M respectively for the company that makes this Namco. Uh, is, that, is that even worth bringing up? Anyway, I'm sorry. So, some of these are pretty hard to find and uh, go for a pretty penny. And I think a lot of that has to do with not the games that are on them, but the fact that they built those museums around them. Because every one of these five volumes has the, a unique museum to explore on its own. It'd be really neat to have all five of these. Uh, but every, every time I see one of the more uncommon ones, 
they just seem always seem too expensive for me to justify buying them for a compilation of you know relatively easy to find games so there you go so this is Namco Museum for a buck all right uh, I've got this bag here all right now this bag this was probably I don't know all right this is what happened I went into a pawn shop and um, you know a buddy of mine who works there he knows what I like and he said got something for you he comes in the back he goes in the back to grab it while he's go in the back I see he's got a box that says a buck each or something like that um, on the counter so I'm digging through it and he has a couple of beat up they're not really beat up I just got stickers on them pretty good yeah they're good condition a couple of good condition uh, we nunchucks Oh my god, that's blown out. Sorry. It's a wee nunchuck. They're white. What can you do? Um, these are pretty good to have around, man. You know, especially uh, Wii U can use these. And when you're talking like eight players in Smash Brothers for Wii U, it's good to have these lying around if you can find them for cheap. So those were buck each. Also for a buck was a black GameCube controller. You can't, can't, uh, can't complain about that. It's dusty, but it's in the buttons are in great shape. All it needs is a wipe down. So for a buck, I mean there are people who are ravenous for these. Ravenous, because this is the standard on how to play Smash Brothers. And if you haven't noticed, that game's rather popular. So for a buck, pretty good deal. And yeah, I mean there's no tears in the cord or anything like that. Good stuff. So then he comes, at, well, you know, I grabbed those, I'm like, alright, that's sweet, good deal. He comes from the back and he's got a, an N64. And if you've ever been to a pawn shop, you may know or not know that when a pawn shop buys in something, you know, they give money for whatever people bring in, they wrap it up all in a uh, plastic wrap. This like industrial plastic wrap, okay? So it's like it's almost like a spider got a hold of it, like a giant spider from Earth Defense Force, and, and uh, you know puts it in a web. So he pulls it out, and I don't know what was wrong with me, but he's like, "What do you think?" And I'm like, "Oh, cool. Any games with it?" He's like, "No, there's two controllers and then the hookups." I'm like, "Cool." And this thing is totally wrapped up. I haven't even looked at it. I'm like, "Cool." He's like, "15 bucks." I'm like, "Oh yeah, 15." Well, that's a good deal, because honestly, that is a good deal. 15 for an N64 is pretty good. Um, I was at a GameStop the other day, and, well, in fact, I was trying to get rid of the very N64 we're talking about, because I don't need it. We have enough of them. I don't know why, why I would do that, uh, but it was a good deal. But even GameStop, if you bring in a, 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 an N64 right now with a controller and the hookups, they're going to give you 35... Uh, credit on it i i think it's 35 credit but it may be 35 bucks i don't know what i'm pretty sure it's 35 credit but i mean that's a pretty good turnaround for what we were looking at there but here's the problem i get the thing spend 15 dollars. i'm already kind of remorseful for it however he does do one thing for me he says look if you take the n64 i'll throw in this too and you know it's a light gun. I'm like cool, you know. It's but it's always good to get something thrown in. And I take a glance at the most important part of a light gun. It's not the barrel. I mean that's important. I'll make sure it's not cracked. But really, what's important is what kind of plugs you got. And here are the plugs that I was looking at. What do you think? Do you know what these are? Any idea? Anybody screaming at it? Let me tell you, well, first of all, this one's a dead giveaway. It's PlayStation 2. So I, well, or at least, yeah, I saw it and I saw PlayStation 2 and I saw this. And for whatever reason, it's, I just assumed this was PlayStation 2. And that made me assume if this is PlayStation 2, the other one has got to be for Xbox. 
just glancing at it, that's what I, I came, that's the conclusion I came to. So that's where, so I walked out with this light gun for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox and a, an N64 for $15. And, you know, the GameCube and the nunchucks, that was a good deal. I was like, why did I do the N64? So a couple days passed, I decided to try and turn this N64 in for 35 bucks. I bring it in, unwrap it from the aluminum, and the AV cord is missing. You know, not that I'm faulting anybody, these things happen. It was my fault to not check. And B, there was a little chunk taken out of the side. So buyer beware, uh, I, I, they wouldn't even take it because there was like a chunk in one of the, the player ports. So I think the thing still works, you know, and again, it's still $15 for an N64. Uh, we've got the AV cords, you know, I had an, a spare, so I put it together. It's a complete set now, but ugh, I was like, I spent $15 for really nothing until I looked at this thing closer. And that's when I realized this Chrome plug, that's not for an Xbox. I was thinking about the back of an Xbox. Back of an Xbox, old, original Xbox kind of looks like that. But that's not how the port of an original Xbox looks like for the controller. No, sir. No, you want to know what that plug is? That's for a Sega freaking Saturn. This is a Sega Saturn light gun. And those aren't hard, or those are not easy to find at all. We do not have any of these in the hold. So I was like, oh my god, it's for the Saturn and the PlayStation? That's excellent. So suffice it to say, this guy's uh, this guy holds his value. It's pretty cool. This is worth more than the, the N64. So it was a good deal uh, after all. Thank God my friend's a generous uh, generous fellow and threw that, that, that pal in. So pretty sweet. Not bad at all. Now I can play some virtual cop on the on the, on the Saturn. Very nice. Because I have we have a lot of con weird controllers for the Saturn, um, but we we didn't have a light gun. And there's some good light gun games on the Saturn, so that was pretty neat. All right, how are we doing on time? We got 20 minutes left in the show. Yikes! Better hurry up. Okay. Uh, what's this? Apocalypse. Uh, this, this is a buck. Apocalypse for the PlayStation. Does the main character look familiar? Well, the, the title gives it away. It's Bruce Willis starring in his very own video game. This game is shockingly awesome. I remember playing this for, uh, for a demo back in the day. I've always wanted this one, but it was always a little too pricey. It's almost like a 3D Smash Brothers and uh, Smash TV. Uh, he's got a flamethrower. The controls are really easy. Uh, it plays a lot like Smash TV, only in third person. So really excited about that. Look at that picture of him there. He's blowing somebody away. Bruce Willis. Uh, I don't know who greenlit, greenlit this because it, on its face, you would laugh all day. But then you play it and you're like, wow, this really turned out good. Okay. A uh, couple of games for a buck. Are these a buck each? Yeah, these are a buck each. Uh, Mulan. Why did I buy this? Why did I buy this? This is a children's game. Well, I looked in the back, and the, this apparently seems is some sort of festival of sorts. And in each building, there's a different kind of game. If you look in the back, they're all mini games, including uh, Mahjong, which is kind of like Chinese dominoes. I played a little Mahjong in like the Yakuza series and stuff, but I've always had a hard time really learning it. So I thought maybe if I played a child's version of Mahjong, maybe I could wrap my head around it to the point where I'm not forgetting how to play it every time I, I sit down to try again. Uh, I think what really grabbed me here, it's not Mulan, it's not the Disney factor. It's the idea of a festival with mini games within. God, do I love that concept. If I could make one dream game out there, it would be a Renaissance Fair simulator. Could you imagine? You got your avatar, you start out with some bucks, and then you can walk around and play the mini games. You know, I don't know about jousting, but you could bet on the jousting. Uh, you know, you could throw the axes. I mean, I would love a really cool Renaissance Fair 
um, simulator. I think that would be a lot of fun. And this is about as close as I've ever, I've seen yet, so I, I, I grabbed it. Uh, the other one is two-on-two -two open ice challenge. Okay, great. A hockey game. Who cares? But look who made it. Yeah, that's right. It's Midway. And you know what? Midway, in my opinion, just cannot do wrong. Even if they make a bad game, it's still laughable. And apparently, this uh, this game is basically NBA Jam on Ice. And it's four-player, so you can play with your friends. And apparently, this guy's... I, I don't know that it's rare, but it's in demand enough where it's not your typical sports game that's going for you know a penny plus shipping. Uh, it's actually... Um, I don't know. This this was almost 20 bucks. I couldn't believe that. So that's pretty crazy. I don't think it's always like that, but it's way more than I thought some forgettable hockey game would be um, on the PlayStation. So pretty cool. Maybe it's fun. I think this was in the arcade. I've never played it, but I mean, if it's NBA Jam on Ice, that's got some potential. All right. So here's another deal. Walked in there on the rack. They had heavy rain. I think this place sells for five bucks a, a PlayStation 3 game. Uh, this is heavy rain in the director's cut. We just didn't have it in the hold. It's an adventure game. Um, frankly, I'm not really that excited to play it, but it's it was one of PlayStation 3's more notable titles. And the director's cut, I think, is kind of a game of the year kind of thing. So we've got the whole shebang right here. Finally grabbed it for five bucks. Had some, uh, there we go. Had a few Game Boy games here. I think they were two bucks, yeah, they were two bucks each. Kirby, here, this is a really good one. I think it's like Nightmare and Dreamland. I think it's like Kirby meets Metroid. That's pretty cool. Uh, Spyro Season of Ice. I think we had Spyro Season of Fire. So I figured I'd just complete the set. I think they're like top down action RPGs. Uh, and then extreme Disney Extreme Skateboarding. I know you can't even see that crap. Um, the plastic wrap isn't really helping. But the, we picked this up for other systems. This is like uh, a Disney version of Tony Hawk. And you're skating through Disney worlds. So maybe it's good. I mean, Tony Hawk on the Game Boy Advance is really good. It's isometric. I wonder if they did it like that for that game too and then finally ooh, some SNES these are three bucks each you got X-Men Mutant Apocalypse excellent game pretty sure we uh, we described it before because we played um, we played a sequel uh, Marvel Super Heroes War of the Gems uh, when we went out to Alaska we played that great game here it's a good game uh, Lion King, same on the SNES and the Sega Genesis, very nice uh, PlayStation game, Ooh, very nice uh, 2D platformer I should say by Virgin Interactive, and finally how can you go wrong, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, come on wake up, I want to see you Honda damn it, there you go. Yeah, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Can't get enough of this, man. We have it in the hold, but this is a great, great game. Absolutely great. I mean, if anything, I'll leave it at somebody's house so I can play them at it. Excellent game. Sorry. Let me get that back. I don't think I'm going to total this up. I mean, we did prices on all these. This is a lot of money. Maybe we'll, maybe we will. I don't know. Last deal. This is a big one. Uh, this was at a thrift store, and I could tell that I got there two days too late. Because these were all together. They were all PlayStation games. They were sitting in a CD rack with a bunch of CDs, which makes you t which tells you that the whoever is putting this stuff on the floor doesn't really care about video games. Uh, more importantly, they're not pricing them like video games. So we got these for 80 cents each. 80 cents each. Not bad. All right, Thunderstrike for uh, the PlayStation 1. Chopper, Chopper Fights, I guess. 
Rainbow Six Rogue Spear. The PlayStation, no manual. Got the case here. Nuclear Strike. Boom! I think Bismuth, uh, first base Bismuth, uh, said he's a fan of this one. Uh, Army Men, Sarge's Heroes. I think we have this. Just the disc, though. Pretty terrible series. So, of course, we also had to have Sturge's Heroes 2. You know, I guess. Another Jet Fighter. Yeah, it's like a Jet Fighter game. Eagle 1 Harrier Attack. Looks terrible. No manual. Oh, God. Blow them out, Brass. That's great. And then finally, uh, G, G Police. Who made this? Psychosis? Yeah, Psychosis, man. I don't know. I've seen this around for nothing. It's three dollars. I probably overpaid for it. Frankly, I'm more excited that it's a double case than anything. In case one of the, in case we find a, man, a valuable manual, a, a valuable game that's in a double case that's broken, I might use that for this. And they wanted three dollars on this one. It was sitting on the counter. It was sitting under glass, whereas these were eighty cents each. So, oh, and then there, also in under glass was. Uh, Pretty nice pickup. Road Rash for the Sega Genesis. You're on a motorcycle. Uh, you're beating up other guys who are also on motorcycles with clubs and chains. Very fun game. So, um, am I really going to do this? Oh, but here, let, here's my point about this this stack. What do we have? You know, soldier. all these army games, either this guy was an army nut. There were a couple other sports games I passed on. Either this, game was, this guy was a total army nut, or we got there too late. And I'm willing to bet that's what happened. I'm willing to bet that for 80 cents, some guy didn't even want these. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I am. So what do we got? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's about five bucks, right? Six bucks with uh, Road Rage. Nine bucks with G-Police. 15, 16, 17, 21 for stupid, $4 on Twisted Metal, small brawl, that was dumb, 21, 22, 23, probably shouldn't have got, oh, I think they mar I think they did three on this, so 23, 26 on Heavy Rain, that was good. Uh, 27, 28, uh, 31, 33, 35, 15 if you count the, the N64. I'm just going to say this is free. Whatever. This is around, you know, around 40 bucks. 35, 40 bucks, okay? So, not that great. I mean, what are you going to do? But, scrimping and scrounging. Actually, some pretty nice stuff in here. Um, and if we really, you know, if anything, we can sell the N64 and uh, get a good good amount back. But I don't really know how that's going to happen. There's that chunk in there. I'm almost thinking about taking it back. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's get back to the Defense Force. Uh, we're going into the nest. I've got, I brought the flamethrower. And uh, the biggest, baddest ra rocket launcher I have, that may be a problem because I may blow myself apart. We're also playing on hard. And on hard, the answer tenacious. Um, plus, if we get deep enough, we may find a queen. So, let's see what we can do here. It's Earth Defense Force. We've got about 10 minutes left in the voyage. Are you serious? Yikes. All right, let's do this quick, all right? I'm sorry that took so long. I feel like, yeah, let's just do it. Uh, Earth Defense Force for the Xbox 360. Yes. All right. In. 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 And we're in. Wake up, you stupid controller. Come on. Oh. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, flamethrower, baby. How long? How big is this bl blast? Oh, yeah, that's, that that's gonna hurt if I blow myself up, and I shouldn't be hurting my friends. 
either. Let's get in there. Oh yeah, they're ready to go. Come on. I don't want to, you know, rocket launchers. Not good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh god! This is terrifying. I wonder if I can if I can fry my friends with the with the flamethrower. I know I can blow them up, and I know I can shoot them. We're sending them out, boys! Oh. Oh boy. <laughs> Maybe this wasn't the best arena to pick. Oh, we already saw a city. I, I, wa I wanted some ag I wanted some up close and personal. You know? Ooh, here's a weapon. You'll notice that these guys have no qualms about standing totally lopsided on it. God, I have a feeling I've totally fried like half my friends with this flamethrower. I don't, I don't really know for sure how that works. This rocket launcher is so slow. Alright, here we go. Am I going the right way? Man, I sure hope so. Come oh, on, let's go. Get me action, please. Another problem with this first version is you actually can't reload. So I'm actually having to, to burn out the whole cartridge just to get this thing back up and running the way I want it to be. You see all that red? Okay, here's some more friends here. Alright, you guys ready, boys? Let's make history. We'll open up with the Goliath. And then we'll start pulling out the flamethrower alpha. Oh god, these guys are gonna be all over me. Woo! Give them hell, boys! Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think my friends are being hurt by the flamethrower, which is good. Ah, uh, look, they're like going, they're am they're ambushing us from both sides. Ah, uh, get your ant butt out of my face! Is this dark enough for you? Are you sick of seeing green and orange? It's gonna happen a lot. I'm sorry. Boom! <laughs> Oh man, you guys didn't even get to see the giant, the the spiders. I mean, there's with so many levels. They they it's not just ants. Just just for the record, okay? There are spiders. I should have shown you guys some spiders because they're creepy too. They have big big eyes and they're spitting web on you. These guys in the dark, they're funny. And I don't know what they're spitting. They're peeing that though. Throwing it at me. Alright, let's keep continue on. Finish off these last two guys here. Come here, pal. Yeah. <laughs> We're out of time. We have like five minutes left in the show. Ugh. I don't want to. I want to finish the mission. All right, one more wave. One more wave, and then we'll be done. Okay. There's more on the radar. Let's just get over there, give them hell, and then we'll wrap. Okay.
That's so funny. I just I just adjusted the microphone on the headset on my earphones. Like that's what that's the mic I'm using. It's not even close to the mic I'm using. Playing too many online games, Reyes. All right, I can smell them. They smell grody. They smell like pus and old garbage. Oh! And there's Marines in there. They're getting attacked. I, d I don't want to use the rocket launcher because then I'll blow them away. Oh, there's spiders! Oh, there are spiders! Ah! <laughs> Get off me! Ah, oh, jeez, jerks. Dude, these guys spit, and on hard, their stuff takes... Oh, yeah, fry. It's barbecue time. See, this isn't good. I, I really need a better range weapon. Because they're going to let me to death. Oh, like that. No, give me the give me the help. Give me the help. Oh, God, that's it. <laughs> that's it, all right. <laughs> all right, that's a wrap. That's all she wrote. We're done. Thank you. Sorry. It's okay, though. You know. Good thing about, uh, the great thing about the Earth Defense Force is, uh, there's always somebody there to take your place if you fall. So, don't worry. The Earth Defense Force is not beaten. They don't take kindly to giant insects. And they'll continue on. So that was uh, Earth Defense Force 2017. It's a one-player game for the Xbox 360. Cheap as dirt. Um, but if you want to play more modern, they have it for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox. They made a sequel. Uh, Xbox 360 also, yeah. PlayStation 3. It did make it to the PlayStation 3 as uh, Earth Defense Force 2025. So that's the sequel. The, the insects come back seven years later. And that's the first one to be online. That's also the first one to have classes. There's four classes, and the classes are so cool beyond just the Ranger, which is who we were playing. And then finally, for Vita, well, they have one for Vita also, PF, PlayStation Vita. And then just a couple months ago, they came out with, they remade the PlayStation 3 one, the sequel. They remade 2025 for the PlayStation 4, and honestly, that's the one to get. This game throws the kitchen sink at you. Huge enemies and lots of them. And I'm talking like lining the horizon coming at you. Um, so it really needs as much processing power as possible to keep up. And the PlayStation 3 one, while it's a lot of fun, it really, yeah, really chugs quite a bit. So to see it playing on the 4, uh, it's really that's really where it needed to be. And uh, I highly suggest that you, and especially you and a friend, pick that one up and play that. It is an absolute blast. And it, uh, on a side note, there's a really good um, there's a really good communication system for people who don't play with headsets. Probably the best one I've ever seen to use on the fly. So, Earth Defense Force can't suggest it enough. We've got time for one question. Let's check our live source here. I think we've got one, and it is, uh, it's, it's Earth Defense Force related. This is from uh, French153. Thanks, pal. Thanks for bailing me out with a question. We needed it. Um, when did Earth Defense Force start, and what is the attraction to you? Okay, well, the first Earth Defense Force I know about never made it to our shores. I'm pretty sure it started in Japan on the PS2 and it was a budget title and you can kind of see that from the graphics people who I, I sell this to especially people with a PlayStation 4 they look at this game and they're like you're serious you want me to buy this it looks terrible it does look terrible but that's okay because the attraction for me is that it's fun it's so much fun because it's simple, it's stupid, and there's flexibility up the yin-yang. All the classes are completely different from one another. And if you devote to one of them, you can even specialize in so many different ways. 
you can, um, like in, in the case of the Air Raider, who's not someone we played today, we played the Ranger, but the Air Raider, this guy's in charge of uh, vehicles and calling down airstrikes. So you can be the kind of airstriker, the kind of Air Raider who decides that I'm just going to devote to telling the, the forces up in the stratosphere where to shoot their satellite laser, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to stand in the background, you know, very far away from all the actual action, and just tell them where to shoot. Or you can be the kind of air raider who's like, no, you know what, I'm going to get down and dirty. I'm going to specialize in giant mech robot suits. And that's what I'm going to go into battle with every time. And I'm going to learn exactly how to use those giant mech suits correctly so that I don't get overwhelmed, unlike someone who's used in using them for the first time. The, I mean, I could just go on and on with the amount of different styles of play and the amount of teamwork that can be patchworked together in Earth Defense Force. And the fact that the communication system has been dumbed down to uh, not using a headset and just a D-pad. The entire D-pad has been devoted to pre listed pre-made text uh word bubbles so there are people that i've played with and i've never heard them before who speak totally eloquently and communicate to the nines without the use of a headset and that can be very good because headsets are great and all but you know sometimes people have a crying baby some people have a really staticky connection they can be just as much of a hindrance as an advantage so the fact that in Earth Defense Force, anyone who owns the game can communicate just as well as someone with a headset is a very, very rare and beautiful thing. So, I, could, I mean, so many reasons I love Earth Defense Force. But at the end of the day, you're blowing people away the way you want to blow. You're blowing away insects the way you want to blow them away. And you're doing it with your friends. Cannot recommend this game enough so go out there and save tokyo from the wrath of giant insects all right so that's it thank you french for the question if you would like uh me to answer a question here in the galleon leave it in the comments section or email at gmail at uh, gaminggallion at gmail.com so thanks again for saving the world with me uh let me get a drink here hold on a second I had a lot of fun. I've been waiting to share this game uh, with you guys for, for quite some time. And uh, finally we had a break in all these freaking holidays. We could do so. So uh, thank you for, for gearing up and going into battle with me. And until then, until next time I should say. <sighs> Farewell and adieu to ye Spanish maidens. Farewell and adieu, ye ladies of Spain. For we received orders for to sail back to Tokyo. And we may never see ye fair ladies again. Oh. Thank God. I had to get all that spider webbing and ant pus out of my mouth.